Okay, so let's get started. Okay, what is here? Okay, okay. Why don't we uh, pray and then we'll start, right? You you can hear well. Okay, it's fine. Okay, yeah. Okay, let's pray. Right, Father, we thank you, Lord. We thank you for this day. We thank you for bringing us here, Lord, in this manner, Lord, to look into your word. Holy Spirit, I pray that you would, Lord, speak to us, you would teach us, Lord. And I just pray, Father God, that what we are learning, Lord, that we'll be doers, Lord, of your word, that we'll be obedient, Lord, to your instructions. And Lord, we thank you that when we do that, Lord, you open up the doors of what we need to get into and what we can, Lord, experience, um, Lord, in the spirit, Master, we thank you. We thank you for the possibilities, Lord, that are there, Lord. We thank you for the gifts of the Spirit, Lord, which are expressions of your heart, of your will. And so, God, this morning we, we just commit ourselves into your mighty hands. I pray for, we pray and invite your presence and your power, Lord. We pray that you would express, Lord, that you would manifest, Lord, uh, your glory, Lord, through us, among us, Father God, even today. We thank you, Lord. We give you all the praise and all the glory. In Jesus' matchless name we pray. Amen. Amen. Okay, uh, my voice is very loud on the monitor, so you can, just a little bit, you can reduce it. Okay, so um, we've been studying about the gifts of the Spirit. Okay, so today we will have three sessions, um, one after the other, and hopefully we'll cover what we need to cover. Uh, I think that's fine. Um, uh, what we need to cover today, right? Okay, so let's um, uh, let me just share the screen. So we um, we looked at um, the, uh, the gift of tongues, interpretation of tongues, and then we also looked at gift of prophecy, right? Um, so gift of prophecy. So what is prophecy? Prophecy is simply God speaking to man through man. So it's a privilege that God seeks to uh, speaks to us uh, about what He wants done, right? And what He wants to convey, to communicate to others. And he wants a message to be shared, his heart to be shared with people, you know, whom who are calling out to him, maybe who are desperate for him, and he shares his heart, right? And he uses us, not because we are perfect, not because we are, you know, um, we are in by any way, we have reached a state of um, excellence or anything, but God chooses to use us in spite of our limitations, imperfections. Right. He chooses to use us, and that's what we see right through Scripture. That God uses people, and these are not perfect people. These are people who have limitations, but they depend on God. They love God, and definitely, you know, they are works in progress. Right? Uh, in a way, you know, we, so as long as we say, "Okay, God, I see these things in me, but I, you know, I want to be changed to be more like You." Right? So, and that's something that. All of us, as we walk uh, with Jesus, that we should um, continuously look forward to, right? That we will be changed to be more like Him. Okay. So, okay. So let's look at see when when the gift of prophecy. What does it actually accomplish? Okay. Um, we we looked at one particular verse, and um, I think it's very important that we never forget that verse. And that is one Corinthians fourteen, and verse three. Right. So it talks about how prophecy results in or brings edification, exhortation, and comfort. Okay, So that's very important uh, for us to uh, know that because that's also a very good indicator of what prophecy is and what prophecy is not. Okay, So it's not, you know, words of, um, words of, you know, something that breaks down people, but it builds up people. 
okay even when it comes to correction even if it's correction even if it's warning it comes with that father's heart uh, god the father's heart is to restore is to redeem people right restore meaning to bring back what they had lost or what is broken redeem meaning to lift them up to the place from which they had fallen okay they were like this but due to you know their choice or due to something they fell so god's heart is to redeem them that's why he's called the redeemer right so so prophecy or the prophetic word which is communicated always brings that about so we need to understand that you know even if it's a word of correction even if it's a word of warning it is restorative or redemptive in nature okay so we need to uh, keep that in mind okay so that's why 1 corinthians 14 verse 3 is very important okay so when he who prophesies speaks edification uh, exhortation and comfort okay so let's look at some of the things that prophecy uh, brings about okay you can read through in the notes uh, but i'm just going to um, go through a few things here so we saw already that it brings uh, edification this is strength encouragement and comfort um, prophecy actually motivates someone into an area of ministry Okay, uh, so do we see that in scripture? We see that in the book of Acts and Acts chapter 13. Okay, we, we read about it when Paul and Silas, where the, Paul and Barnabas were in the church in Antioch. Okay, look, look at Acts chapter 13 and verse 2. Okay, Acts 13 and verse 2. Now, this was in the church at this place called Antioch, right? So it, the Bible says that there were certain prophets and teachers, and it names some of them, and they ministered to the Lord, which means they were you know, praying, they were worshiping, and they fasted, and the Holy Spirit said. Now, what the Holy Spirit brought about was a prophetic word. Okay, It was a directional, you know, something that they should do. Okay, So what was the word? Verse 2, what does it say? Now separate to me Barnabas and Saul for the work which I have called them. Okay, so that that is what the Holy Spirit was conveying. And then verse four, verse three. Then having fasted and prayed and laid hands on them, they sent them away. So here comes the prophetic word, and here's the obedience to the prophetic word. They sent them away. Okay, so a prophetic word brings about or motivates someone into a specific area of ministry so you know paul barnabas saul barnabas and everyone they were there, just there in the church but god spoke people heard and we know prophecy is god speaking to man through man so here is this group of people god speaking to them to send paul and barnabas on their missionary journey so that's when they paul actually starts his first missionary journey now we know paul went a journey to many places, many places which they had not heard the gospel. He shared the gospel, and then churches were planted, people were blessed. Many people came to know the Lord, like Corinthian church, Ephesian church, you know, church in Galatia, and all, all these regions. It was because Paul journeyed there, or somebody whom Paul had touched went there and you know uh, started. So how did how did it begin? How did it all start? It started when. They receive the prophetic word and they obey the prophetic word. So it motivates people into action. So you might have received a prophetic word saying, okay, this is what God has called you to, or is this what God is calling you to do? This is what God has for you in future. Like for, a, for example, you know, I was working in a company, like I was working in a, in a corporate sales, in corporate sales, and I was working as a assistant sales manager, right? So that was my job. I was working and I, of course I was a believer and so on. But one day there was this prophetic word, okay, and that was the first time when I stepped into All People's Church, which was, you know, back, I'm talking about 2001, September. So I forget the date, I mean, which exact day, but it was one evening and then there were very few people, but then there was a guest speaker that day and he, he called me forward and my wife and then he prophesied saying god is calling you to be a 
pastor. That's the first time I ever heard the word, uh, you know, that God is God calling me to be a pastor. That was a prophetic word. But from then on, there were series of prophetic words, which around about the same time, which would come, right? And these prophetic words were stirred in me a desire, motivated me to move in that direction, you know, to pray along those lines, to ask God, God, what should I do? How, where, when, right? So it just moved me into my destiny. Right. So it of course it has to be with cooperation. You have to pray, you have to, you know, learn, you have to prepare yourself. All that is there. But we see that the prophetic word motivates or moves someone into the ministry that God has for them, right? Uh, in a specific area. So it, it need not be just full time, you know, quote unquote full time ministry, but it could be anything. It could be a work, it could be business, maybe God wants you to start something, maybe a school, maybe uh, maybe he wants you to start an orphanage, maybe he wants you to start a hotel, whatever it is, right? Uh, uh, so the prophetic word does that, moves you into uh, that area of action, right? Okay, then it also re uh, reveals the potential that God has placed in you. What, is, you know, what does that potential mean? What does potential mean? Anyone? Huh? Sorry? Ability. Yeah. Ability. So, ability which is there, which is not yet revealed, or which is not yet, um, you know, you're not walking in it. Right? Maybe someone has an ability to sing. So, you can say he has that potential, right? But he's not. Maybe not yet discovered it, or not yet using it, not yet walking in it, right? Potential, ability. So prophecy calls that out because God knows the hearts of people. God knows the lives of people. So God calls that out and say, okay, this is who you are. Like, for example, you know, when we look at John chapter 1 and verse 42, okay? Uh, the Lord Jesus has this conversation with Simon Peter, right? So he says, okay, Simon, son of Jonah, you shall be called Cephas. Okay? You see that? John chapter 1, verse 42. Simon, son of Jonah. So Simon means a reed or you know, something like a plant which is very, uh, very weak. Right? It can blow where the wind blows. It will turn. It's, it means Simon, you know, you're a, it means a reed. In the language in the Hebrew language, Simon. But he says, You shall be called Cephas. Cephas meaning a rock or a stone, right? So something, so he's he's calling out, you know, this is who you are. This is what you are called. This is what people call you, Simon. But this is what you will be. You know, you will be someone solid, someone strong. You shall be called Cephas. So what is the Lord saying? Okay. You know, this is something that's going to happen. And that is what exactly happened, right? So Simon, who was, you know, who betrayed the Lord or, or denied the Lord, right? He said, I don't know Jesus, right? When it came to all the, 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 that night of persecution, he said, I don't know. And then something happened. He was filled with the Holy Spirit. So much of boldness and courage. The same Peter, the same leaders, when they surrounded, he said, how can I not preach about Jesus, right? How can I not obey God? You tell me that. Right? So something happened. So he had become literally what the Lord has prophesied, had prophesied over him. He says, Simon, you are like this, but you will become like this. So Simon had that potential. Simon had that ability, you know, all that bold, all that fear, all that insecurity, everything was removed or the Holy Spirit, you know, overshadowed all that weakness and changed him. And he became strong. He became, you know, uh, uh, Cephas, right? So, right. So we see that. Then um, the uh, you know, the prophetic word also brings confirmation, okay? which means God has been speaking to you, maybe leading you. You already, you know, know that God is, you know, every time we read the scripture, something uh, maybe about the future, maybe about solving a problem. God has already put in your heart. God has already spoken to you. You know that God is calling me to do this. But the prophetic word confirms that. 
is someone whom you do not know someone who with whom you have never shared hey, this is you know i have this desire you know i want to do this in future someone with whom you have never shared that that person comes and says you know i i just sense that god is leading you in this way or god wants you to be doing this right so it's a confirmation right it's already confirming what god has already put in your heart so the prophetic word does that okay what else it's to um, inspire prayer for a particular matter for a particular individual uh, to bring guidance right and uh, yeah uh, i think that we should look at we acts chapter 10 acts chapter 10 verse 19 this is about peter um and uh, he is waiting to have lunch right lunch is being prepared food is being prepared and he has this vision right acts chapter 10 and verse 19 this is what the holy spirit says when peter thought about the vision the spirit said to him behold three men are seeking you arise therefore go down and go with them doubting nothing for i have sent them okay so what is he saying you know three men are coming now peter has no idea but he says three men are coming go with them and don't doubt anything okay so it's guiding direction so much of details right and uh, he has just had the vision of this sheet being lowered about all these animals which a jewish person is not supposed to eat right but the voice says arise peter kill and eat he's thinking about this and then here the holy spirit says go three men are coming go to them and then he goes and then he sees that it is actually a Jewish, non-Jewish person's house where a Jewish person is not supposed to go and enter and have food and stay and so on. But he goes there and then they hear about Jesus. They receive Jesus. They are filled with the Holy Spirit. Okay. So the vision makes sense. Right? God is saying, what I have cleansed, you cannot call as something that is unclean. I have cleansed, so you go. Right? So, he, so Holy, uh, the prophetic word can give direction, okay, direction, guidance, go do this, right? Okay, uh, to bring correction, we see in uh, like the case of prophet Nathan and David, to bring insight into scriptures, um, to alert believers of maybe natural disasters. Uh, we read in, we read in Acts chapter, um, was it 13? Okay, Acts chapter 11, right? Acts chapter 11, verse 28. Acts chapter 11 and verse 28, it says, One of them named Agabus stood up, showed by the Spirit that there were going to be, there was going to be a great famine throughout all the world, which also happened in the days of Claudius Caesar. So it could also be a warning about something, natural disaster or something that is going to happen. So what happened here is they prepared themselves, right? Um, so it says that this is what he prophesied. Then the disciples, each according to his ability, determined to send relief to the brethren dwelling in Judea. So he's saying there's a great famine. What is a famine? No rain, no agriculture, which means no crops, right? No food to eat, no grains. So, so it affects the entire economy. The you know people are in, uh, have a lot of hardships because of that. So here, what happens is the church they prepare and they send relief. Okay, maybe they send food, maybe say they send grain, maybe they send money, whatever. It says that they sent relief each according to their ability. Okay, and they did so to the elders by the hands of Barnabas and Saul. So this is the, so uh, the, since God knows what is going to happen in future, he reveals, right? So this can also happen. Okay. So um, he reveals the secrets of the people so that they can draw near to God. Okay. Let's look at one scripture, 1 Corinthians chapter, um, I think it's 14. Okay. 1 Corinthians 14, verse 24. 
1 Corinthians 14, verse 24. Okay, it says, But if all prophesy, and an unbeliever or an uninformed person comes in, he is convinced by all, he is convicted by all. And thus, the secrets of his heart are revealed. And so, falling down on his face, he will worship God and report that God is truly among you. Okay? So let's say a person comes in, he does, he's not a believer, does not know Jesus. He walks in to a church and there is a prophecy about that person. Right? So here's, he's a complete stranger to the people in the church. Now, people also do not know him, but the Lord reveals something, some information about that person. And it's a prophetic word which is shared. So what happens? That person understands, hey, this is something supernatural. This is something that only God can reveal and not man because nobody knows that information, right? So because of that, a person comes to the understanding and conclusion that truly God is alive, truly God is among you, and yes, he is the one true God. So what happens is that person draws closer to the Lord because of the prophetic word, right? So we see that, and that that is, that is also happen, uh, something that can happen. So draws people who do not know God to know him and to receive him as Lord and Savior. Okay, to wage a good warfare, okay, um, like Paul writes to Timothy, and this is what he says, um, okay, this is in First Timothy chapter one, verse eighteen. Okay, First Timothy chapter one, verse eighteen, it says, "This charge I commit to you, son Timothy, according to the prophecies previously made concerning you, that by them you may wage the good warfare." Okay, so what he's saying is, you know, you receive the prophetic word, good. You know, sometimes we, we receive the prophetic word. Okay, God is calling you to do this. God wants you to do this. God is one day going to make you like this. Right? God is going to use you in this manner. God is going to bring all these things into your life. We are so excited. We are very happy. We are excited. You know, we are, we are like, oh, wow. You know, all this is going to happen. But, but Paul is telling Timothy, Timothy, you remember all these prophecies that were made over you? Right? He's saying, by them, you wage the good warfare. So what is he saying? He's saying, you know, there will be difficult times. Okay. A war is conflict, right? So it's a spiritual conflict. He's talking about a spiritual conflict. He's saying, maybe you might face discouragement, right? Maybe you might face discouragement. God has called you to ministry. God is calling you to minister in this place. But maybe you're facing discouragement. Maybe you are facing opposition. Like people are not wanting to receive the message. They are opposing the message. They are persecuting you. Or maybe there is spiritual conflict. You know, there is the powers of darkness opposing and coming against you and so on. So, so Paul is saying, by these prophecies, you wage the good warfare. Okay, so a prophecy is actually, you know, the word of God. It is the sword of the spirit. So he's saying you... You fight the good fight with it. So just, you know, maybe a lot of things were prophesied over you. Okay, just remember that. Okay, what are these prophetic words that were, you know, uh, that were spoken over my life? And you know it's a genuine prophetic word of God, genuine word of God. So what do you do with it when you face difficult times? What do you do with it when you face, you know, times that are very discouragement and discouraging and so on? You wage the good warfare. You take it out and you speak it out. You remind yourself saying, yeah, I'm going through this time right now, but this is what God has for me. God has spoken and this is what God has for me. So I believe it and I receive it and I come against all kinds of fear or discouragement or all the weapons of the powers of darkness. I come against it in the name of Jesus. So, so he's saying, you know, this is what you need to do. Timothy, right? By the prophecies that were made over you, according to the prophecies previously made concerning you, that by them you may wage the good warfare. So it's a good warfare, fight of faith, right? 
Okay. Um, okay. So so these are some some ways by which uh, prophecy or th these are some things that the prophecy brings about. Okay, uh, the operation of the prophetic gift. Okay. So how do I how do I operate in this gift? How do I operate in this? So three simple steps. One is to pray, okay. desire, have an expectation, right? Pray. Second one is to perceive, meaning to receive, to be aware of what the Lord is saying. Okay. First of all, we must believe that God can speak through us or God can speak to us. Okay. So if we if, suppose we think, like, okay, God can never speak to me then no matter what he says we think it's our imagination you know we think you know maybe that's that's not god that could be you know maybe it's just my just my thoughts just my imagination right so we after praying we perceive what is god saying you know it it will be most likely in the way that god has already spoken always spoken to you right and we saw several ways by which god speaks to us okay what are some ways by which God speaks to us. Anyone? He speaks to us primarily through the word. So which means I'm praying and when I'm asking God, Lord, you speak to me, give me a word that I can share with someone or show me something that I, you know, that I can, uh, I can walk in. Which means that he can actually speak to us through the word. Right? He can remind us or bring to our mind, the Holy Spirit can bring to our mind scriptures, scripture verse. It could be a scripture verse that you've read. It could be a scripture reference. What is a reference? Huh? Scripture reference? What chapter, what verse? Right? John 3.16, scripture reference. So it could be a scripture reference that you're reminded of. You know, it brings to your mind. And uh, maybe you don't know what the verse is, but this is a scripture reference that comes to your mind. You're praying, this is a scripture reference that comes to your mind. You, you turn and see, okay, what is it? Or it could be even a scripture reference that you see. You close your eyes and this is what you see, right? This is what you see. It's like a, it's like a picture. So God speaks in these ways. We know primarily through the word. And he leads us by his spirit. So the Holy Spirit witnesses to our spirit. We saw that Romans chapter 8 verses 14, 16, 14 to 16. He leads us and he witnesses to our spirit. So which means he brings some information to our spirit. He speaks to our spirit. Right. And then we look at some Old Testament scripture. Right. We see... Um, uh, Hosea 12 and verse 10, this is what he says, I have also spoken by the prophets. Okay. I have also spoken by the prophets and have multiplied visions. Visions are pictures, right? It could be moving, it could be still, multiplied visions. I have given symbols. Symbols are also pictures. But what is a symbol? Anyone? What are symbols? Some common symbols that you know. What is a symbol? Huh? Yeah, so cross is a symbol. Right? It's a symbol. So what does it refer to? It's actually a it's actually a terrible way to die. It's a way to execute someone. That's a cross. But it's become a symbol of hope. It points to what happened on the cross, what Jesus did for us on the cross. It's a symbol. Right? So, so certain things, you know, like plus, into, minus. These are all symbols. Right? Mathematical symbols. And they all represent something. When you say into, it means multiplication. When you say, you know, that's division. Right? Two dots. Right? So it's division. So these are symbols. So they point to something. So God can actually speak to us. This is what this verse says. I have given symbols through the witness of the prophet. So which means when you're talking about the prophetic, prophetic gifting, God can speak to us through symbols. 
Okay. Now about this prophetic ministry and again the apostolic ministry, you're going to spend a semester, okay, whole full semester, just talking about the prophetic. Okay. So we won't get into too much detail. So I'll just leave it here. Like God can speak to us in these ways. You no. Know, so one full semester is about the prophetic. Okay. So yeah. So second step, perceive, pray. Perceive in all these ways, God is going to speak, right? Then the third step is prophesy, which means to speak or act on it or do something according to what God has shown you, what you have perceived. Okay, so now as we are receiving this, okay, we are praying, we are receiving, we are seeing some, some pictures or something, we need to test. Okay, that is what we saw, right. Test all prophecies and hold on to what is good. So Paul's instruction, 1 Thessalonians 5, verse 23, I think, he says, do not despise prophecies, right? Um, sorry, uh, not verse 23, I think the verse before that, he says, um, test all things. Do not despise prophecies. Test all things. Hold fast to what is good. Okay. So you and I, we need to test it because... Well, God can speak an authentic, pure word, okay? But we may not understand or we may add some things to it. So we need to test. Is it from God? Is it my own imagination? What is the source? Right? Who is speaking here? Is it God? Is it my own imagination? Is it something else? Right? So we need to test. So that is why... The instruction is test all things, hold fast to what is good. So how do I test? You know, what does the word of God say? Okay. Is it uh, is it opposite to the word of God? Okay, maybe you're you know one receives a prophecy like you know steal something or hurt someone or do this, and you know that that is not what the word of God says. That is not the heart and mind of mind of God. Then you know if it's not in line with the character of God, then it is not a prophetic word because God's word will be in line with his will, will be in line with his character, his desire, everything. Because it comes from him, right? So the word and the spirit agree. So you can't say I'm led by the spirit and do something opposite of what is there in the word. Right? So that means that we are not actually being led by the spirit of God, right? So, so that's the thing. Does it align with the scripture? Second uh, test could be, do I sense God's presence on it? You know, God releases uh, um, his shalom or his peace, his presence, right? And we all can sense the presence of God when we when we actually receive something that is from God. We sense his presence. So do I have that? Do I have a sense of God's presence, his anointing, etc. Okay? In my spirit. Um, third one, is does it bring edification, exhortation, comfort? So that's the thing. You know? Because we saw 1 Corinthians 14 verse 3, whoever prophesies speaks edification, exhortation, and comfort. So is there something that is building up? Is there something that is encouraging, encouraging the person? Is there something of comfort to the person? This prophetic word. right? Even in correction, even in warning, is there edification, exhortation, and comfort? Okay? So... Uh, so that's another uh, check, right? Another way to test is, is my spirit, is my heart clean from any kind of bias or prejudice? Okay. Now, see, prophecy is for people, maybe it's an individual, groups of people, maybe a church, right? Nation, so on. It's, it's always, you know, with people, associated with people and so on. And of course, we know uh, natural calamities, but then people are involved. Okay. Now, what happens if you have a prejudice or a bias against people? Okay, so, so what is it? What that means that okay, uh, you know, maybe people who are speaking a certain language, you know, you don't like them. Okay, or people who, who have, maybe, you know, who have ear piercings. Okay, guys who have ear piercings, you don't like them. Okay, or guys who are who have beards, you don't like them. For example. So that means 
even when God, now maybe God is giving a very comforting, encouraging, uplifting word, but in your heart, you don't like that person. Right? What happens? So when, if God gives an encouraging word, but you, in your heart, since you, there is a lot of, you know, unrest, prejudice, so when you speak it out, you might add certain things. Okay, God wants you to repent, or God wants you to correct yourself, or something you might say, right? Because you have a prejudice. Right? So we need to, for that, that test or that check also we need to have. You're saying, God, my heart is clean, right? Uh, I, I don't want my heart to be contaminated with anything, any kind of, um, this kind of thought or prejudice or bias. Okay, so it's our responsibility, okay? Okay, next step, how do we release it? How do we release it? There are many ways. You can speak it, you can sing it, you can write it, you can state it, you can act it out, right? It was a prophetic act, which Agabus did later when he met with Paul. He took Paul's belt, he tied his hands, and he said, the owner of this belt, this is what the condition is. Like he was talking about Paul's, um, you know, when he, Paul goes into Jerusalem, how he is going to be imprisoned, and uh, he's going to face, for the sake of the faith, he's going to face all these things. So, so this is what he does. He's, he takes the belt, he ties it, and he says, it was a prophetic act. So Paul could see it for himself. So Agabus did that. He's the same person who prophesied about the famine and all that. Right? So it can be acted on. It can even be, you know, so the way the prophetic message is delivered is uh, expressed is in your control okay so you don't have to like be dramatic be theatrical you can just state it simply as a normal conversation you can also pray pray about it like pray through it you know maybe you're praying for someone and here comes the prophetic word you can pray that right so in all these ways prophetic words can be released okay one word of advice or caution is not to say, you know, thus says the Lord. Okay, as we are learning the prophetic, as we are learning or learning to move in the prophetic, to say, you know, this is what you know God is saying, you know, you need to do this, or thus says the Lord, or I, I believe Lord wants you to do this. Okay. So the better way to put it is, you know, I sense that God is speaking like this. I sense that God would want you to do this, God would want you to go here, but so when we say, you know, I sense that this is what God might have for you, then you're giving that person the responsibility to check. Because we need to check. We need to test. Right? So that person is also has the responsibility to test the word, the prophetic word. So you can say, instead of saying, thus says the Lord, you know, this is what God wants you to do for sure. You know, you can just say that this is what I sense God is speaking, God is saying, God has for you. But you test, you pray, you test, right? You're submitting the word and giving the person the responsibility, right? Um, to test the word, right? Okay, prophecy can be given to uh, individuals, to a small group, it can be to a larger group. And also, you know, the way prophetic we can like, do is like um, one person or maybe a few people, then a group of people can pray over them, right? It's called prophetic presbytery or what we read as Paul saying to Timothy, uh, Paul, you remember, uh, Timothy, remember the gift of God that was given to you by the laying on of hands of the eldership, okay, by prophecy, it says that by prophecy and laying on of hands, you received a gift. All these elders got together and prayed over you. So something like that can also be done, right, in the releasing of prophecy. Okay, understood? So are we all ready to prophesy? Okay, so um, yeah, you can go through the notes, some more information which is there. So that is the prophetic gift. Okay, so um, so pray, perceive, prophesy. Three simple things, okay? So we're just going to take some five minutes, okay? Pray, perceive, prophesy. Okay, so um, maybe you can go sit with someone who uh, whom you're not sitting with right now, maybe who is whom you know. By now you know everyone. Okay, just uh, be with someone who you no normally don't talk to, okay? You don't have too much information about this. Pray, perceive, prophesy. Maybe, you know, just pray a lot. Simple things, right? Uh, on online also, you can do the same thing. You can probably, you know, put it on the chat also. You can put it on the, uh, you know, the 
the uh, yeah you can put it on the chat pray for someone you see the list there pray for someone and whatever god puts in your heart maybe there's a picture maybe there's a verse maybe there is you know something um, you sense something right and you you state that okay you share that okay this is what i saw i don't understand it it's fine okay maybe you see a picture you see one coat hanger yeah okay, i praying for someone i'm seeing one hanger you know clothes hanger what does it mean no problem just tell the person okay this is what i saw okay fine is that okay okay i just want you guys to move around okay uh, yeah just get up you understood what i said understood right okay so very very short simple um okay very quickly we we just have 5 minutes we have 5 minutes to do this okay okay go ahead yeah the, all the girls can be together three of you so you can pray you can take turns yeah so you know short prayer okay you're not going to pray for revival visitation <laughs> uh, you know praying for the nations and uh, very short prayer okay pray receive what you see prophesy okay uh, online i think we have about 21 people so uh, what i would suggest is uh, you go through the list and um, yeah you just pray for one person you pick okay and you say okay i just pray for just pray for one person and see what god is putting in your heart and you can just post it here right you can put the person's name and uh, post you know what is it that god puts in your heart it could be just one sentence it could be a word okay uh, it's fine so let's let's do this quickly um okay or oh, three of you okay maybe i can i can pray with someone yeah anyone yeah maybe uh, nelson or someone okay fine okay right start Uh, to begin with, maybe you want to pray in tongues. You can do that, right? Stir yourself up, and and then um, pray and release.
Okay, so um, how's everything? I, I I don't see much on the chat. Okay, if you if you prayed for someone and uh, let's say. Okay, so what we'll do is we'll uh, we'll take a break now, okay, uh, and then we'll we'll come back in ten minutes, and then we'll talk about what we prayed, what we received. Yeah, we'll talk about that. Okay, okay. Thank you. We'll take a break. Come back. 